We can, um, if you press the arrow, I think it's on 75, maybe. Right, so if you, does it, so maybe do the arrow down to 73 and it should kick on. Okay. Yeah, it'll come on, there you but Sue said Monday was a good class. Oh, I, I think. Get to make it. Oh, you didn't come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's ter she's terrific. She has twenty plus years of teaching and knowledge. So she, when once she starts, I mean, she's just offering. The tapping, the energy. Hello, hi, Mary. Yes, I know she. The energy work is fabulous. Yeah, you can. She actually has her own email list. Um, oh, good. Yeah. So then, if you email her and have her put you on the list, you'll get weekly emails from her. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, this class is usually <laughs> usually we're at about eight to ten for this class. So I bet here's an one more. We still have five minutes, six minutes. Oh, wow. I think she said 21 or here. So, yeah. She's doing lotus, lotus in a, a headstand. Yeah. 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 But then you have to untangle yourself and get out. Mm -hmm. So she she fell and got some bruises. I said, oh. I don't know people who get bruises in yoga. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. but uh, she just loves it and she's so strong. She's that's fabulous. She's at the best in her life right now. She's turning forward. That's great. Oh, really? And it's uh, it's really, really mm -hmm. beneficial for anyone with MS. Yep. Yeah. She's yeah. So committed. That's wonderful. She's proud of me for going to yoga. Good. Here. Good. And, her and then you can practice together. Yes. I know yesterday at my class, I love yoga. Um, this neighbor all of a sudden has started to come. She's been talking about it for, I don't know, two years. And finally this year, she's coming to class now. And she brought her son yesterday. And it was just, I, and I look back and, you know, my son's 11. So he's not interested in doing yoga with me, but I kept thinking like, oh, well, maybe fast forward, you know, another 10 years or so. Wouldn't that be nice if he came to do yoga with me? <laughs> yeah. My son's 33 and he does yoga with us. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. We should all do yoga. <laughs> Make sure you have a couple of blocks. And I also noticed that there are a couple of chairs. So I was reading um, a little bit. So my training is influenced by a form of yoga called Jiva Mukti Yoga. This is the, the book. Um, Sharon Gannon and David Life are the founders of this form of yoga. And it's based on the ancient teachings from India. They took themselves to India back in the late 60s. And then they founded Jiva Mukti Yoga in New York City in early 70s. And it's still going strong today and very, very rooted in, this, in the ancient teachings, the sutras and anything that the the um, East 
brought to us. But Sharon, her prior to yoga, her yoga life uh, was a dancer and her partner, David, musician. So they were doing yoga in the city, in New York City in the 60s. And at that time, it was literally like the eight to 12 poses from Iyengar. And you know, they're kind of looking at each other like, is this it? <laughs> this is all we do. And once they went to India and then came back, and that's when they then fused it with more, more movements, but having the music and really, really incorporating the meditation piece. So their book uh, really covers, walks you through the eight limbs. And I love their chapter on meditation. So I found some passages. I read a little bit last week. Remember we talked about the eight limbs and then yeah. getting to the beyond the physical. Um, so diving in a little bit deeper, I thought I'd share with you some of their, uh, some of their points that they make. They can't emphasize enough about finding your meditation seat though. And it's hard, I, I, all we have really are the blocks, but if anyone is limited and is having a hard time sitting either in this easy seat cross leg or hero's pose, which is, um, you can do it. If the full expression of heroes would be where your seat is coming in between your ankles, your heels and your knees are coming together. That's hard on a lot of people on their knees. I mean, even like I feel it. And to find a meditative seat, you want to be able to achieve stillness in it and get past the feeling of I need to move out of this seat. Yeah. <laughs> so then we support it. So then a block comes into play. And for me, like immediately. It's one block yeah. is relief for me. Yeah. Now, if I warm up a little bit more, I'm, I'm okay to sit with my seat on the ground. Two blocks also, like I know Karen, she wasn't, she's not here today, but the minute that I suggested two blocks for her, she's, it was like a light bulb. She's like, oh, I can sit like this because <laughs> um, cross-legged is not accessible for her. So like, this is another option. Blankets and bolsters, we have, we work with those at our, the studio where I work, but a blanket folded up is a really good option. So that does it for me as well. Like if that gives me enough support, you can even fold it in once and that makes a nice seat. If the tops of the feet, I know that that's not always comfortable for people. Blanket is great for that because you can open up the blanket one more time and have both your knees and the tops of your feet on it and that makes it more comfortable third option so for anyone because i know some people have extended their legs straight out sharon and david say that lying on your back for meditation is not ideal because um it's almost like it's it's uh, too dull you want there to be this perpendicular expression of the spine. So there's two chairs here. So if anybody isn't comfortable with Euro's pose or cross-legged, grab one of these chairs when we move into meditation and having your feet, you do this at home, having your feet firmly rooted and either your back against sitting back so that your spine finds that perpendicular to the floor. So but it makes a difference to find your seat, I guess is the, is the point that I'm making. <laughs> so I'll leave these here. So at the point that we, when we get to meditation, you are welcome to make use of those. So we'll do some movement first, just to kind of get the, <laughs> get the blood flowing. Let's actually start standing today.
have your blocks at the top of your mat about shoulder distance apart or at the edges where it's easy to pull them in. And let's just start by bringing some symmetry to our stance. So have your toes fan out and have your second toe pointing forward. And just notice if you naturally see Mary, how your left foot's going out like that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if your natural way to stand is where the feet are proning out, that might be an indication that your hips are a little tight. <laughs> so bringing them in, so you might wanna then just be aware of that then as you practice and sending some breath into your hips. And then rock forward and back a little bit. So you come onto the balls of your feet, lifting your heels, rock back to your heels, fan your toes out, rock forward and back. Maybe close the eyes and just start to find a rhythm of moving forward and back. And notice when you rock forward, there's two points in the ball of your, balls of your feet. When you rock back on your heels, there's two points. So now come to ground into those four points of your feet. Let your arms just rest, palms facing the legs, fingers pointing to the earth. Bring awareness to the brow, soften the brow, soften the eye sockets, unhinge your chin or your jaw. <laughs> and now notice your chin, notice where it is and have it be parallel with the floor. And then see if you can draw your chin back a little bit as you did that, maybe feeling a little bit more space in your cervical spine. So our spine is made up of three parts. The neck is our cervical spine. Then behind the sternum, we start our T's, T1, moving down a T12, making up our thoracic spine. And then below our thoracic spine is our lumbar spine. So of our whole spine, the T's, our thoracic spine section, is really the most pliable. The part of the spine that's meant to have some movement, twists, so when we twist, bring your awareness to your navel and think about when we move into a twist that we want it to be from the navel up. So take a moment to draw the navel in toward the spine and see if you can tuck your tailbone under a little bit and See if you feel a lengthening of the spine, maybe the feet press into the mat just a little bit more when you do that. <clears throat> maybe you feel a lengthening up of the spine as you lengthen that low back. And now slide your hands together at your heart center, tips of your thumbs gently resting against your heart center. For your intention this morning, think of a spinning wheel. So sort of inspired from my son's bike racing this weekend. <laughs> and in this chapter, David Life and Sharon Gannon illustrate how our thoughts are like the rim of a wheel, spinning, constant motion. But when we can meditate, 
and let those thoughts come to our minds slower. We're moving toward the center of the wheel. Do you ever notice how the outside rim can be a motion, but the inside looks like it's not moving? So as you set your intention, maybe draw inspiration from that to see if you can slow down your rim in today's class. Let's open with the sound of Om. So take a full inhale, exhale it out. We'll Om on our next exhale. Om. And still with your eyes closed, Let's move into a three-part yogi breath. So place one hand over your heart. Move the other hand down over your low belly. Spread the fingers of especially your lower hand so your thumb is maybe resting on your navel and your pinky pointing toward your pelvic floor. And then take a breath. Inhale, exhale it out. And now inhale a third of the way, another third, final third, reaching the upper hand, and exhale a third, a third, and a third. Inhale a third, a third, and a third. Exhale a third, a third and a third. Next two rounds, see if you can do it without moving the shoulders up toward the ears. See if you can keep your elbows soft. Move at your own pace, keeping your attention on controlling the breath. Finishing the round that you're on, then take a full inhale. And exhale, arms come back alongside, flickering the eyes open. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, maybe turning the gaze up to the hands. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more. Inhale. Open those arms. Slide them down to heart center and to Dasana Mountain Pose. Float the arms up. Reach right hand. Wrap it around left wrist. And then lift that left arm up, lengthening that left side as you move into the twist. Mindful to keep your hips. Shining forward. So the twist or the side bend coming from really in line with the navel. One more full inhale and exhale. And then your next inhale brings you to your center. Wrap left hand around right wrist. Again, it's a gentle pulling up, keeping that arm in line with the ear and feeling the lengthening up and guiding you into the side bend. But hips are staying level, almost like you're pushing in. Try pushing into that right foot to help ground you. Another full inhale and exhale. And then inhale, come to center. Sweep the arms behind your back. Interlace the fingers. Bring your knuckles to your sacrum. So that bony part. 
Knuckles to sacrum, elbows moving toward each other, shoulders away from the ears. And inhale as you lift the chest, opening across the heart space. Rooting down through the feet. Breathe in. Breathe out. Imagine a pencil in between your shoulder blades. Drawing the shoulder blades toward each other. And exhale, release. Roll out the shoulders. And go the other direction. And release. And then we're gonna do a flow. So <laughs> lifting the arms up. So remember I mentioned that twist. So watch for a moment. I'm gonna drop my right arm, drop my left arm into the twist, but I'm keeping my hips facing forward. So I'm just <laughs> twisting the upper body to the right. And then inhale, lift that right arm, arms by the ears. Exhale, drop the left arm, twist open to the left, but keep the hips moving forward. Inhale, arms up by the ears. And exhale, twist open to the right. Keep moving like that. Inhale, arms up by the ears. And exhale, twist to the left. So the gaze is also looking to the left. Inhale, arms up by the ears. Exhale, twist open to the right. Inhale, arms up by the ears. Exhale, twist open to the left. One more time, each side. Inhale, arms up by the ears. And exhale to the right. Inhale, arms up by the ears. And exhale, open to the left. And then arms up by the ears and Tadasana. And then adding a little bit more. So chair pose. So start bringing your seat towards your heels. Make sure that your toes aren't crunching. Bring fingertips down by the mat and let your belly rest on your thighs. And now float your arms up by your ears as you lift your belly off the thighs. So you're still sitting back, beautiful, beautiful. And now inhale, straighten the legs, arms come by the sides. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, chair. Exhale, Tadasana. So now we're going to add the twist into that. So inhale, arms into chair. And then exhale, lengthen the legs. Keep your arms up. Twist open to the right. Inhale, arms up by the ears. Exhale, chair. Inhale, standing up. And then exhale, twist open to the left. Inhale, arms up by the ears. Mm -hmm. Exhale, chair pose. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, twist open to the right. Inhale. Exhale, chair. Inhale, straighten the legs and exhale, twist open to the right. Reach the arms in opposite direction. Inhale, arms up by the ears. Exhale, chair. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist open to the right. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, chair. 
Inhale, lengthen and exhale, twist open to the right, left. And, <laughs> and inhale, lengthen, exhale, Tadasana. Harder than it looks. <laughs> deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, floating the arms overhead. And exhale, begin bending the knees, take the arms out wide. So coming into our forward fold with bended legs. Let the belly come to your thighs as you reach down for your blocks. So if this feels good with bended knees, stay here. Have this be your forward fold. If it feels good to straighten the legs or straighten the legs halfway, find your max. Once you find your max, let your head come forward, hang forward, and breathe. Forward fold, breathing into our hamstrings, our low back. If there is pain in the low back, that's an indication to bend the knees a little bit. One more full inhale, releasing tension from the neck and exhale. And then everybody bend the knees again and let's roll, roll up to standing. Inhale, exhale, taking the head the last to come up. And then step forward so your feet are in between your blocks. <coughs> Put a bend in the knees, hands to blocks and step your right leg back for low lunge. So your blocks are framing that left foot your left knee in a straight line with your left ankle. Really press through, really lengthen and straighten that right leg. Big stretch for that hip flexor and then drop the right knee down, uncurl the toe. Bring your blocks to the highest underneath your shoulders. Once you feel stable, Inhale the arms up by the ears on Johnny Asana. Full breath in, full breath out. Full breath in. And then hands to heart center on your exhale. Twist to the left. So twist. So you're still, don't lean forward yet. Just twist, open to the left. There you go, keep your hands at heart center. Now lean forward, lean the belly toward your left thigh and maybe that right elbow makes contact with the left knee. Breathe in, breathe out. Spine. So feel like your spine is really long in the twist. Maybe for one breath, tuck the right toes under, lift that right leg off the mat. You don't have to, <laughs> optional. Staying in your twist and then lower that right knee back down. Uncurl the toe and bring the hands to heart center. Hands down to the block and then flip your left toes to face the ceiling. You're resting on your left heel. So half split, split pose, half Hanumanasana. Maybe hinge forward, deepening the stretch. Right hip stays in line with right knee. Keep flexing the left toes, drawing them back toward you. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale to lift back up and then drop that left foot down. 
Bring the blocks forward to the middle height to frame the left foot again. Tuck the right toes under and lift back to low lunge. And then give a big push off those right toes to bring that right foot to meet the left. And lift up halfway, find a flat back, breathe in. And exhale out, bend the knees, hands to blocks and step that left leg back. Finding low lunge on the side. Really straightening that left leg, right knee, right ankle. Then we drop our left knee down, uncurl the toes, bring these blocks under our shoulders to find stability here. So press into the right foot, draw your hips to the midline, then flip the arms up. Maybe you'll find a little stability with those adjustments. Full breath in. Full breath out, full breath in, and then exhale, hands to heart center. So do the twist first, so twist open to the right. Our shoulders are still basically in line with hips. Then lean forward, coming into this twist, keeping our spine long. Feeling the twist from our navel up. Beautiful. If you want to deepen the twist a little bit, press the palms into each other and you might feel a deeper opening of the right chest. And then if you did it on the other side, if you want to curl the left toes under, staying in your twist while you do it and lift the left leg for a breath. And then lowering that left knee back down. We all bring hands to heart center, hands to blocks, and then flip the right toes up. Finding half split on this side. So try not to sit back. Keep that left hip in line with left knee and then flex the right toes. And to deepen, we bring our chest toward that leg hinging at the hips. So not rounding into the fold, but hinging forward. Full breath in, full breath out. And then inhale to lift up. Plant that right foot, bring the blocks forward, framing the right foot, tuck the left toes under. Lift that left leg and now step the right leg back. So you're doing plank pose with hands on blocks. Draw the belly in. Feel the line of energy from your heels, up your spine, out through the crown of the head. And then exhale, knees down to the mat. Move the blocks to the side. Finding tabletop pose. Have your knees under your hips. So separating the knees a little bit. Stacking shoulders, elbows, and wrists. And then draw the belly in and lift the crown of the head. Tilt your tailbone up, coming into cow pose. And exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. One more time. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Stay in cat pose. Push your seat back to your heels. And then inhale, come up on your knees, float your arms overhead, palms touch. And exhale, take the arms alongside your legs, drop your forehead or crown of the head toward the mat for child's pose. Full breath in. 
full breath out. Inhale, sitting back on your heels and then lifting up, float the arms overhead. And then exhale back to tabletop. Inhale into cow. Exhale into cat. Keep that rounded spine. Push your seat back to your heels. And then inhale, stand up on your knees. Flip the arms overhead. And exhale, child's pose, arms alongside your legs. Crown of the head dropping toward the earth. Full breath in, full breath out. Next inhale, rounding up and then coming up on your knees again, floating arms overhead. And exhale to tabletop. And then extend right leg behind you, lift that right leg so your hips are level, flex that foot and then cross that right leg behind you. Try not to collapse in your shoulders or chest. Keep real strong in between there. So you're pushing into your hands. Keep that strength and then look over your left shoulder. Try and catch a glimpse of your big toe. So feeling a deep stretch on this right side. Breathe in. Breathe out, opening up this hip flexor. Breathe in and out. And then next inhale, bring your gaze between your hands, lift that right leg, and then drop that right knee down to tabletop. Extend left leg behind you, lift it up hip height. Keep your shoulders square, chest engaged, and then cross that left leg behind you. Then look over the right shoulder. Keep pushing the hands into the earth so your shoulders stay strong and your chest and belly aren't collapsing. Notice how this side feels versus the other side. Is there more tightness or tension on one side or the other? Full breath in, full breath out. Bring your gaze to look between your hands, lift that left leg and then drop it to tabletop. And then bring your blocks back so they're underneath your hands. Bring your right foot between the blocks. And then I want you to bring the right block on the inside of the right foot and heel toe your right foot to the edge of your mat. So both blocks are in between. Have the right block, they should be under your shoulders, the blocks. Tuck your left toes under and lift that left leg. So this is a version of lizard pose where we bring our hands to the inside of that leg. We're sinking our hips down toward the mat. Everybody feeling that stretch? Yeah. <laughs> so just getting a little deeper into our hip flexor. Maybe let that left hip sink a little bit lower. Maybe even drop that knee down. Maybe turn the blocks to the lowest height and drop your elbows to the blocks. So you're dropping down to the inside of that right leg. Try not to collapse completely. See if you can keep your chest lifting up. And then hands to blocks to bring yourself back up. Bringing the blocks to the middle height to help you tuck those left toes under, lift up, and then slide that right leg back. Come back to tabletop. Let's do one downward dog in between. So bring hands to the outside of your blocks, tuck your toes under, lift your knees and shins, bring your low belly to the tops of your thighs and then have the hips lift you up into downward dog. 
sometimes downward dog is considered a rest pose. <laughs> Maybe it feels like that right now. One more full inhale. And then exhale the knees back down, finding tabletop. Bring your hands to the blocks. Step the left foot in between the blocks. And then bring the left block to the inside of that left foot and heel toe your left foot to the edge of your mat. And then adjust your block so they're under your shoulders. Tuck your right toes under, lift that leg up. Start letting the hips sink a little lower with that right leg straightening. Breathe in, breathe out. Notice how the blocks help you keep your chest open in the third. Now maybe drop that right knee down. Maybe the blocks come to the lowest and you can drop your elbows. Right toes either tucked under or top of the foot on the mat. Full breath in. Full breath out. If you feel like you're collapsing in the upper body, try and lift the chest a little. And then hands back to the blocks, bring them to the middle height to help you lift up. Tuck the right toes under to lift up. And then heel toe that left foot back in. Block to the other side. Take your blocks to the sides. Plant your hands, step that left foot back, downward facing dog. Full breath in, full breath out. And then rock forward to plank on your inhale. Start dropping your knees down, uncurl your toes, drop the hips down. Rolling down onto the belly. Stack your hands, elbows out to the sides. Let your forehead rest on your backs of your hands. Full breath in, full breath out. We're just taking a little rest here and then we'll move into some back bend work. And then take your arms alongside your body. Let your forehead drop to your mat. So coming into Shalabhasana, keep the upper body on the mat. On your inhale, begin lifting your legs up. So only the legs, see if you can zip your legs together and feel a lengthening from your low back out through the legs, out through the toes. Next inhale, see if you can lift your legs up just a little bit higher, turning your pubic bone in toward the mat and then exhale, lower the legs. So now just the upper body. So keep your legs on the mat. On your inhale, start by lifting your arms up. Only your arms. Keep your forehead on the mat. Feel your shoulders draw away from your ears. And now turn your pubic bone in toward the mat. On an inhale, lift your upper body. Beautiful. The gaze is looking down toward the mat, just ahead, but keeping your gaze down helps your neck to stay long. We don't want to increase tension in the neck in this pose. One more inhale, see if you can lift one more set of ribs off the mat. And exhale, lower down. Turn one cheek to the mat. Full breath in, full breath out. 
bring your forehead to the mat. So now we're gonna put it together. So zip your legs together. On an inhale, begin lifting your arms, shoulders move away from the ears and shoulder blades move toward each other. Turn your pubic bone toward the mat to help you not clench or grasp in the low back. Legs and upper body lift, your hips are glued to the mat. And think about lengthening from the crown of the head out through the toes. One more full inhale, see if you can lift just a little bit higher. And then exhale, lower down and turn the opposite cheek to the mat. You can bend your knees, maybe slowly windshield wiper them from side to side. And then forehead to the mat, lower the legs, slowly rolling onto our backs. And then bend the knees, so planting the feet on the mat. Reach down with your arms, see if you can graze your heel with your longest finger. So moving into a stretch for our IT band. Take the right foot off the mat just a little bit and then slide it behind your left heel reach down with your left hand and wrap it around the top of that right foot. So you're grabbing a hold of the right foot and now pull that right foot through as you lower your right leg down to the mat. Float the right arm overhead on an inhale and glide that right shoulder blade under so that that right arm and right shoulder can lie on the mat. Breathe in, breathe out. Didn't know you had an IT band until this stretch. <laughs> Didn't that feel good? good? You ever try and do this before you're warmed up, you will, realize how much tension we hold in our IT band, which is then related to our, our hip flexors. So trying to keep a good wrap of the left hand around that foot. Pressing into that left foot a little bit to help open up the pelvis. Beautiful, everyone. And then exhale, lowering the right arm down, release that right foot, bring that right foot to the mat. And just take a full breath in and out here in neutral. And then we'll lift the left foot off the mat, slide it behind the right heel, reach down with your right hand, wrap it, wrap it around that left foot and draw it through and then slowly lower that left leg to the mat. On your inhale, take the left arm overhead, gliding that shoulder blade under. Breathing in, breathing out, maybe noticing how this side feels versus the other. <coughs> With each breath in and out, see if you can soften the shoulder a little bit more. Maybe let that left thigh drop toward the earth a little bit more, letting gravity help you. Where else can you let go of your grasping? One more full inhale. And then exhale, lower that left arm, release the left foot. And then heel toe your feet out to the width of your mat. 
And then windshield wiper your knees. So drop them down to the right. So your left knee is going to the inside of that right foot. Inhale the knees through center, drop them down to the left. Inhale through center, exhale, drop down to the right. Inhale through center and drop down to the left. And then bring in the center, grab your block, heel toe your feet in closer. Do that little test again, extend your arms, make sure you can feel your heels with your longest finger. So that way your, your heels are in toward your sits bones. And then press into your feet and lift your hips up, slide the block at the lowest height under your sacrum. So that bony part of your low back should be resting on the block. So once you're there, then extend one leg out onto the mat at a time. So your heels are resting on the mat. There can be a little bit of space in between your legs. And on your next inhale, float the arms overhead, moving into a release for our psoas muscle. Maybe glide the shoulder blades under again to help soften the shoulders. Let the arms be effortless. So making sure that the block is supporting under that low back, the bony part of the back, not the, not just above the sacrum. And then with your breath, so this pose, in addition to stretching our psoas muscle, we're able to activate some of our energy channels. So we have one that lies beneath the navel. Then we have one that lies at the navel. And then we have one at our heart center so with the breath, feel the breath move from one energy channel to the next. So a beautiful stretching of our stomach muscles, allowing our psoas muscle to release. Shoulders are soft. If the arms overhead is too much for you, maybe try cactus arms, bending at the elbows, but having the arms overhead is just a beautiful expression of moving the prana through our whole body. One more full inhale. And then exhale the arms alongside your body, bend one knee at a time. So the feet come to the mat, press into the feet to lift up and take that block out from under you. And then draw the knees into your chest. Take the arms out to the side. Keep the knees drawing into your chest and then drop the knees down to the left coming into our revolved abdomen twist. The head can stay looking up at the ceiling or you can turn your head and have your gaze look out over your right arm. The right arm, the arm should be coming straight out from the shoulders. So again, here we're protecting our low back, our lumbar spine. The twist is from the navel up. So your knees, your legs should be forming a 90 degree angle and your knees are more or less in line with your navel. On your next inhale, feel it gather in your belly to lift the knees to center. Find a full breath here in neutral. 
and then drop the knees down to the right. And again, forming a 90 degree angle with the legs. If there's any pain in the low back, you can place a block in between the thighs. And gaze can stay looking up at the ceiling or turning the head to look out over the left arm. Full breath in, full breath out. Next inhale, feel the, get, the breath gather in the belly, lift the knees to center. Wrap your arms around your legs, lift your forehead up to your knees, making a yogi ball, giving yourself a hug. And then let the head drop down, take the hands underneath the knees, begin a gentle rock forward and back to bring yourself up to a seat. Extend the legs out in front of you, draw the right knee in your chest, let that right knee drop out to the side. So the sole of the foot's coming to the inside of the leg. Flex that left foot, inhale the arms up, slight micro twist to the left, and then begin to hinge forward, forward fold over that left leg. Full breath in, full breath out, maybe the eyes soften or close completely. Matching our, the length of our inhale with the, the length of our exhale. Inhale to lift up, bringing that knee up and then lengthening that leg out. Drawing the left knee into the chest, let that knee drop out. Sitting up on the sits bones, float the arms up, slight micro twist to the right, hinging forward. Softening the gaze, softening the shoulders. Matching the length of your inhale with the length of your exhale. Letting the sits bones root down. And inhale to lift up. Bringing the soles of the feet together, butterflying the knees out. One last forward fold. So you don't have to fold. You can just stay lifted, sitting equally on your sits bones, or you can hinge forward. So moving into Baddha Konasana, feeling the length of your spine on your inhales. Release on your exhale. If there's any pain in the low back, just come to being more upright in this pose. One last inhale and exhale. And then finding your seat of choice. So you can stay here, cross leg, and then crossing the legs. Cross-legged cross would be where you're bringing the legs in a little tighter. You can also use a block for crossing the legs. You would rest the edge of your sits bones on the block, letting the knees drop so it would look like this. Or you can come to hero's pose. Using a block as well. Or you can use the chair. <laughs> 
So moving into our meditative seat, and the next step is to find a mudra, so a placement of our hands. Sharon says that our hands are an expression of our heart. Our hands tend to grasp and clench. So to have our hands in a mudra, it allows for a steadier flow of our prana. So your palms can be up or your palms can be face down, or you can bring the tip of your index finger to meet the tip of your thumb and let the third, fourth, fifth fingers extend. So you wanna find a seat that you're comfortable in for at least, we'll be here for a good five minutes or so. Spine perpendicular with the floor. And let the eyes be soft or coming to a close. And sharing some of their words. So focus on the breath. Don't follow the breath into the body, but feel it at the tip of your nose or in the rise and fall of the abdomen. Do not control the breath. Just notice when it is going in and out Keep the attention on the movement of the breath. Let it come and let it go like life itself. The breath comes and goes. Allow the thoughts to align themselves with the movement of the breath. Don't hold your breath. And don't hold on to a thought. Don't hold on to a thought and begin thinking it. Instead, let the breath come. Let a thought come. Let that breath go as you let that thought go. Don't breathe. Instead, let the breath breathe your body while you watch. Don't think. Instead, let the thoughts flow through the mind while you watch. Become the non-judgmental -judg witness, the, the sakshi. Your body will become still when you eliminate any reason to move it. Don't breathe. Instead, let the breath breathe your body while you watch. Don't think. Instead, let the thoughts flow through the mind while you watch. Being the sakshi, the non-judgmental witness.
slowly making your way onto your back as an option, or if you want to stay longer in your meditative seat. Begin to deepen your breath, inviting small movements back in. So Sharon and David chose this passage from the Bhagavan Das. It's here now in their chapter on meditation. And just continue to bring yourself to a more awakened state, wiggling fingers and toes, maybe taking the arms overhead. Small movements as you deepen your breath at some point, drawing knees into your chest and rolling onto your right side. 
So Bhagavan Das says, an attitude of sincerity and humility is the first prerequisite on the spiritual path. We've got to know that we don't know. We've got to know that there's nothing to know, that there's only being. The best attitude is to be very grateful and thankful and constantly generous. Making your way up to a seat when you're ready, keeping the eyes closed or at a soft gaze, rooting down through the sits bones, bringing your hands to heart center, a gentle bow of the head, taking a moment to thank yourself for coming to your mat for this practice today, for your practice. Making your mat your home, H with the emphasis on the O-M-E. Sealing the practice with the sound of OM. Take a full inhale, sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> oh. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you from my divine to yours. May you enjoy this sense of ease and peace through your day. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. And that was recorded. So you can enjoy that at any time through Glen Eagles. Oh, no. Yeah, all of my, anytime I to turn on the Zoom, it gets recorded. So then they're in the on-demand library. Mm -hmm. Yeah.